Okay, so in the introduction we continue with, a good introduction does what? A good introduction will answer the questions in just a few pages, these questions we just brought up, describe relevant scholarship, literature review, it'll include exhaustive historical accounts, and I think that this is something I often see students have a lot of trouble with, and that is your research is for sure not new. There's something that came before. Did you include that? Did you explain that context? It will assume that the reader is knowledgeable, and I like this a lot because what we're saying is that the reader actually does know something. He's not nothing. So you should not write your, your introduction from every little tiny detail. You don't want to have every bit written down, but rather I know something about this area of chemistry. I don't need to explain chemistry 101 to my reader. I'm going to just skip to the parts that are important for my research. That's very key. Of course you're going to be using citations or these references that we talked about. That is you need to say where did this information come from, who wrote this, what article did it come from, what journal did it come from, what book did it come from. So inside your introduction you're going to have a lot of citations. That is citing who this came from, what is the source, a lot of those. You should only be including the previous work that is really related to your research. You don't need to include everything. You need to include only the things that are related to the research you're working on, the research question or the hypothesis you have. You need to emphasize the relevant issues in a logical way. Lots of times people use um, time, so they use earlier studies first, later studies later. Another way to organize is by um, ideas. So this idea is related to consumers, this idea is related to products, this idea is related to quality, and then each one of these has its own background, its own literature that I'm going to introduce. First this one, then this one, then the last one. So that's a kind of logical continuity. And then your hypothesis and your research questions, as we've said. You need to explain how this all links together. Okay, so that is the introduction. So All right, for this part, let's go ahead and try a practice. Use your QRP online software and try to write 100 words to start, and then I'll give you some feedback. So let's start easy and simple and try to work on your introduction section. 100 words focused on the introduction to your research. Now remember, you may be a research student or you may be someone who is not a research student and you just want to practice anyway. So if you don't have a research topic, try to think one up or make one up or use Google Scholar to find a topic and try to follow something that you find that you're interested in. Otherwise, go ahead and use your real research topic or a topic that you're using for another class, for example, for a report you have to write if it's research oriented. So again, 100 words focused on the introduction. Use your QRP software. And remember, the QRP ebook has some great examples in it that you can use. And also, QRP online, when you're using it, has that little yellow help box right next to where you're writing. You can click there and get a bunch of example sentences. There's nothing wrong with copying sentences. It's a great way to learn how to write. You can copy an example sentence and change a little bit. Change the research topic, change the methodology, change the details to match what you need. So go ahead and don't be shy to go ahead and copy a bit and make it fit. Remember, try to keep your sentences short. Shorter is better.